Good evening, everybody. We're going to take a look at Tropical Storm Melissa now in the Caribbean and um, named earlier this morning. So uh, we're going to look at some of the, the forecast factors, some of the possible outcomes and what some of the impacts might be. Um, so forecast to move kind of off to the west northwest in the general direction of, of Hip Haiti and Jamaica, where we currently have hurricane watches out for Haiti and a tropical storm watch out for Jamaica. But we'll look at the forecast factors and, and what's influencing them in a minute. So um, current analysis, uh, this is the storm. You can see, you know, it looks like a tropical storm, uh, got some deep convection. But if you take another look, this is infrared. This is shortwave infrared, another channel. A little bit hard to see, but um, it actually kind of shows how disorganized this is because you have your, your low level center out here and then your mid-level center somewhere in here. Um, and what that is, it's a big vortex tilt. Um, so for tropical cyclones, for hurricanes, you want to get a stronger storm, you would want to have these basically vertically aligned so that the, the heating, the pressure falls can all occur, can occur faster. When they're tilted like that, the pressure falls very weak and it, or may not even fall at all. And so until the, these get better aligned, um, the system is not going to intensify much. And, and part of that is because there's some fast low level flow so that that low level center is still just trying to kind of run out ahead. Well, this mid-level center is, is hanging back and so um, until this slows down this it may not align and intensify much and the other problem for intensification is there's this area out of, dr of dry air out ahead so there's not um, you know that's kind of preventing some convection from firing there near that low level center so until this resolves itself we probably won't see much intensification um, at least in the short term and you can kind of see um, looking at a sounding this is from the euro model but short term you can see you know, again we have you know 15 20 knots of low level flow and then five to 10 knots of mid-level flow. So that gives you, you know, 25 to 30 knots of shear uh, between the low and mid levels. And that's really not that favorable for intensification. And especially because it's, it's here below the outflow. So the, the storm is not really able to push back on it. And so that's why you're seeing this disjointed structure. And we kind of saw that in, in uh, this morning's recon flight as well, or this early this afternoon, sorry, we had the low level center way off to the way, way off to the west. The convection, the mid-level center, way off to the east here, and that structure seems to be persisting into the evening. So, not very organized in the short term, but in the you know medium range to ne next few days over time, I think it'll it will align. And how fast it does is going to be important for the the track forecast. Because um, if you look here, this is um, Tomer Berg's nice uh, page where he's got the the super ensemble of all the different models, um, Euro, GFS, UK Met. You can see you have all sorts of different possibilities. GFS, especially the, op, the deterministic, is still insistent on this, this quick northeast turn across Hispaniola. Uh, the Euro is kind of a slower track, uh, more of a threat to, uh, to Jamaica, and then eventually Cuba, although some of its ensemble members are also um, in this, you know, a little further east in this region. And then if you have, you have some other solutions, uh, you know, like if you look at the overall ensemble means, maybe just south of, of Jamaica and then up toward Cuba, but you have a wide range of possibilities anywhere from, from northern Cuba all the way to the eastern part of, of the Dominican Republic. So a huge area at risk here. And um, the intensity long term is also going to depend a lot in a lot of ways on whether this gets south of Jamaica and has more time over water or whether it kind of comes up here um, with more land interaction. And both of these are on the table still. So we'll look at some of these different possibilities. And, and um, our deterministic individual models are kind of showing the same story. You have some of the halves forecast, some of the hurricane models kind of on the south side here. GFS is a far east outlier with that turn toward Hispaniola. Um, our consensus is kind of here in the middle. Um, and sometimes consensus is the best in terms of minimizing error, but sometimes consensus just is an average between two widely varying solutions and that may be the case here so there's still a lot to sort out and if we look at the reason some of the, the synoptics are really tricky here is if you look at about two days the system is going to kind of be somewhere in the vicinity here of just southeast of jamaica and southwest of haiti and you have these these synoptic factors you have this trough this dip in the jet stream to the north you have a weakness in the ridge here so this would try to turn the storm turn the storm northeast gfs because it, it gets going too quickly and, and aligns too quickly like i said it's it's Probably not going to happen that quickly, but it just follows that weakness out to sea. And you have the across Hispaniola and then out to sea. You have this ridge building in from the west here that's blocking some of the western movement. And, and 
if this gets a little further south, further west, this might try to pull, to pull it west, and, and we'll see a solution that does that in a minute. So you kind of have these differing, different um, factors tugging it. And some models, you know, again, the GFS brings it east here. Some of the hurricane models are then are as a result of bringing it south. Others just kind of have these, these two factors tugging it, and, and it kind of just sits here near um, Haiti and um, Jamaica. And that's kind of what this Euro run does. It really doesn't move a whole lot in the next three or four days. And so you know, this would be, as we'll see in a minute, a really bad rain solution, especially for, for Haiti. And then if it does, you know, no matter where it is, uh, whether it's south of Jamaica or, or near Haiti, if it doesn't get turned right away, it's probably gonna sit here for a while. And then the next chance to turn will be this next trough, um, kind of a short wave uh, to the north in about six days. And so as that comes in, we'll see, yeah, that would be another chance for this to scoot on out at some point uh, from wherever it is. But a lot of the, the like I said, the short-term track is gonna depend on, you know, if, if it keeps following that low-level flow, um, it might end up further west here. And we'll see that in a minute if it follows that mid-level flow and gets a little stronger, maybe we do see more of a turn toward Haiti. So we'll really just have to see how the structure evolves in the next 24 hours or so. This is the HAFS B forecast. You can see it, it kind of uh, jumps around a little bit as the convection tries to pull that low-level center in. But it really looks like HAFS B for the next two to three days doesn't really show any significant organization. You can see that the pressure is only about 1,000 millibars still in three days. And so as a result, it's really staying pretty far south, um, southeast of Jamaica here. It's kind of on that, that more southern um, track. And then eventually it does turn west under that ridge and starts to intensify. This is probably the ceiling that would cause the highest intensity because if you look, the, the upper level winds when it gets south of Jamaica here would be extremely favorable. Very light, um, huge anticyclonic flow. You know, the air is able to rush out at upper levels away from the center in all directions. This is about as favorable of an upper pattern as you would ever see for an Atlantic cyclone. If you look at the SST, um, it's extremely warm, 29 to 30. You know, if you look, not much cooling even where the storm has been and more warm water ahead. And so th the sky would be the limit in a scenario like this. Um, another scenario would be HWARF, which is a little bit closer to what the GFS, but west of that, kind of closer, somewhere like the Euro 2, where it sort of just shows this slow drift off the coast of Haiti. And this is really problematic for, would be problematic for Haiti and um, Dominican Republic, because if you look, let's go back a couple of frames, you can see as it's sort of just hanging out off the coast, you know, it's, it's stay, the core is staying offshore on this run. We have all these rain bands coming up from the south. And with the mountain range here to over Haiti and the Dominican Republic, that upslope flow would just pile up rain and, and cause all sorts of flash flooding issues here. And of course you would get storm surge, especially near where the inner core is. And so this would be a major flooding and major humanitarian disaster, if this, especially if this is, you know, gets close enough. And the other thing is, if, you, um, if it is able to stay offshore and intensify, you could get you know, some strong wind gusts. Um, HWARF or, and the experimental version of HAFSA bring this up to a major hurricane. And so you know, think if the core of this were to move onshore, in addition to all the flooding, you'd have you know 100 knot, 150 mile an hour wind gusts onshore, and and you know a wider area of tropical storm force winds, and so that would be a big problem as well. So we still can't really rule out impacts for Hispaniola if this kind of takes the right side of the guidance. But if you look at the the, um, the 12Z Euro run, this is kind of probably a worst case scenario for Jamaica, where it sort of intensifies south of the island, but then turns to the northeast, and you can see it's a, a major hurricane, basically with a direct impact on the island, and so you'd have. Uh, rainfall, storm surge, strong winds, all of that, and you know potentially a, a catastrophic situation there. So we'll just have to see. Um, and, you know, Cuba down the line is also quite possibly under the gun from this. There's a lot of ways this could go. We'll just have to see um, which solution kind of ends up being most likely as as we go the next couple of days, monitoring the structure. We'll be getting more recon flights tomorrow, and we'll go from there. So hope everyone has a great night and stay safe.